Greetings and salutations. My name's David Rodwin, and this is some epic bullshit. So, I have a confession to make. I don't get art. Like visual art. Like paintings. I understand art. I've studied art. I can tell you what biblical symbolism means in a painting. I can pick out a Miro from a Monet. I think Calder's impressive, and I can explain to you why Rauschenberg ran over a canvas with his car and called it art. But here's the thing. I don't care. And I don't care because I've never been moved by art. I weep at simple songs. I'm left breathless by extraordinary dance. And I actually laugh hysterically at Shakespearean comedies. But I can look at the greatest painting in the world and... it just sits there. Lifeless. Inert. Unengaging. Maybe I'm just wired defectively, or at least different from other humans, because I have never had an emotional reaction to a painting. Well... That's not 100% true. You see, in 1996, there was a traveling exhibition that hit the Met called The Splendors of Imperial China, Treasures of Taipei. And while I have no knowledge of Chinese art, and I have no love of Chinese art, I did have a love who was in China. My college girlfriend moved there after graduation, and she had very little access to email. Remember, this was like 1995. So, we wrote letters. Copious letters. Reams of letters. And though we'd broken up two years before I went to this exhibition, we were still writing letters. Because my heart had not yet let go. Some part of me still thought we'd get back together. So really, I just went to the exhibit to find some way to feel closer to her. I wandered into the imposing Metropolitan, got my ticket, stood on line, and viewed 2,000-year-old vases, hairpins from the Empress Dowager, and more ancient calligraphy that was totally meaningless to me than I can even recall. But there was only one piece that I still remember to this day. And that was an amazing scroll that you had to wait an extra hour online just to go and view. And when you got to the beginning of this finely detailed landscape, you had to shuffle along in a long line of people. And when I saw my first glimpse of it, I was thrilled to see we had been given a pictorial drama. In addition to the extraordinarily drawn cliffs and seas and mountain ranges, we were given a protagonist who leaves his house, crosses a bridge, and every few feet experiences some new adventure. And this was something I could latch on to. This is a drama that made sense to me. From trekking through the wilderness to fighting naval battles, this every man was having a walkabout that rivaled the journeys of Candide. But while extracting the silent drama from these images, I was constantly being distracted by tour guides who would come through this room every few minutes, blathering meaningless data to a group of a few dozen people who couldn't even see the scroll. This piece is from the Song Dynasty. It was made by a Taoist monk circa the year 1200. It's 32 feet long and took the artist almost 10 years to complete. Okay, let's go into the next room. And while they only spent a few moments in the room, the line was moving along so slowly that it took a half hour to traverse those 32 feet. And when there wasn't a tour guide blathering in my ear, I had the pleasure of being directly behind a guy and his date. Oh yeah, so here's where the guy wins the battle, and then I see right, right there after that, you know, he, he wins the treasure, and uh, well, you know... Uh, the Will you just shut the f*** up. I'm trying to feel something here, and while art doesn't mean anything to me, I've got enough metadramas to maybe actually have an emotional reaction to something. We finally reach the end of the scroll, and this idiot turns to his girl and points and says, oh, Well, you know, we're just about at the end, so you see he's raising his hand and he's waving us goodbye because he's saying like, Hey, the scroll is over. See ya. And thank the gods, they left. And though there was a crush of people behind me, silently threatening to do me physical harm if I didn't move on as well, I lingered over the last two feet. So I inspected our hero, and the guy was right, his hand was raised. But as I looked more closely, it became clear he wasn't saying goodbye at all. He was saying hello. But that wasn't it. You see, in the distance, about 12 inches further down the scroll, there was a bridge. And over the bridge, there was a dog, and the dog was running toward the man, its mouth open, barking, a greeting to its master whom he had not seen in years. But that wasn't it. I peered closer at the painting, and I saw, in the last few inches of the scroll, there was a house, one room, open window, and in that little thatched hut, there was a woman, sitting, waiting, 
patiently. And she'd been waiting this entire time. And she didn't know that her man was coming home. She hadn't heard him yet. After years of silent devotion, he had finally returned to her. It was that moment just before the revelation and just before that joy of reunion. And that fucking moron thought he was waving goodbye. He was calling out to his love. I'm home. I'm back. And that's when I lost it. I just started weeping right there in the museum. I just... I realized that I didn't truly hold the belief that Lucy and I would be back together again someday. I wasn't so faithful. I had abandoned love. And it took a Taoist monk who died almost 800 years before I was born to show me that. But other than that one experience, I just don't get art. <laughs> My name's David Rodwin, and this was some epic bullshit. Rosa.